So Cadian or Kaschan, Death Corps or Militarum Tempestus, let's talk through the lore and gameplay of the different regiments of the Imperial Guard and the pros and cons of choosing each in-game. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're returning to the Astra Militarum and we're going to be talking all things regiments. The Guard may be particularly interesting for their sub-faction choices, unlike lots of the rest of 40k, the regiments operate in really different ways than the law, having entirely different kit, unit and appearances to represent the practicalities of drawing human levies from all sorts of ends of the galaxy. To represent this and the fact that you often have Astra Militarum forces working together with many regiments under one banner, Games Workshop have both made the regimental system more simple but also more complicated, and I thought it could be interesting to talk over the different regiments, a bit of lore and background for them, the miniatures that they have available, any specific rules that relate to their keywords, and perhaps their more lore appropriate doctrines, traits and relics. We'll go through each of the regiments in turn, and then sum up by talking through some of the strongest regimental traits, and which ones I think are likely to be taken by more people. To start off, I thought I'd just briefly touch on rules. Regiments in Codex Astra Militarum do work pretty weirdly, strangely both more simple and more complicated. The simple side of things is that you basically just take any combination of miniatures drawing from your different regiments of guard, and you can fill them all in one mixed army, certainly something that guard do in the law. All the units with the regimental keyword gain regimental doctrines, an army-wide set of rules that affects every single one of those units. Some of those regimental doctrines in the law are more associated with one regiment, say for example Kaschan's and Brutal Strength, but in terms of rules and keywords, the rules aren't actually linked anymore. You could now, for example, have a Kaschan tank regiment and give it Blitz Division and Armoured Superiority if that made more sense for the way that they fight. The bit that's more complicated though is that there's also some unique data sheets that hail from a specific regiment, say for example Cadian Shock Troops get the Cadian keyword, and there's certain Kaschan units like Iron Hand Strachan. They basically function the same as anything else, but get a few bonus rules on top. So say for example the Cadians can access an extra stratagem or two, plus the unique relic, the Relic of Lost Cadia. It does mean that as a guard commander you've got a few different options now. You can either field that mixed force and take multiple different benefits and different choice of tactics, maybe making some slightly odd combinations, like having Ursula Creed ordering Death Corps about and things like that. You could just mix and match models throughout the codex, or you could try and field a force that's stylistically the same, say try and adopt the Death Corps aesthetic for the entire army, and then either just don't bother with the things that have Cadian or Kaschan keywords, or potentially just convert your own miniatures for them and give them gas masks and things, and use their rules but have them fit in with your Death Corps army. For example, you could just have an assault division of your Death Corps infantry and say that they're going to be using the rules for Cadian Shock Troopers. I think most people will be kind of fine with that, just maybe mark them out with a different shoulder pad or base colour or something to show that their rules are going to be operating a tiny bit differently. In any case, in this video we'll talk through each of the regiments one by one, the law, the models, any specific rules that they have, and their law appropriate doctrine from the previous codex, and then we'll look through the entire table of regimental traits and talk about some of the stronger ones. So first and foremost for the Imperial Guard we have the Cadian Shock Troops, very much Games Workshop's poster boys of the faction, and generally if people think of a generic Imperial Guardsman, a Cadian is probably what they'll picture. In the lore, the Cadians are highly disciplined soldiers from the now fallen fortress world of Cadia. In its heyday, it was a vast planet covered entirely in bastions and guarding the gateway to the Eye of Terror. Every single member of the population militarised from birth, everyone given a rank, and trained to the absolute maximum to be able to repel the frequent Black Crusades issued forth from the Eye, which they managed to do so for millennia. Of course, Cadia has now fallen, the various regiments that were from it are scattered somewhat across the galaxy, though apparently they have been establishing new enclaves like that new Cadia world, though their home world is gone, the regiment will certainly live on. In battle, they're just famed examples of practical warfare and tactical flexibility. The Castellans are well known to be strong commanders, and the army is well known for coordinated fire patterns, combining las guns with big tank and artillery strikes to obliterate the foes of the Emperor. Miniatures wise, if you're collecting any guard regiment, Cadians are probably the easiest to. They're very much easily the best supported regiment from Games Workshop, plenty of the generic kits have kind of got a bit of a Cadian feel, and with the latest Imperial Guard Codex, the entire range has been redone, replacing a lot of absolutely ancient miniatures with really quite new and snazzy ones. Within the faction, there's the new Cadian Shock Troops, Command Squad, and Heavy Weapon teams that aren't out yet, they'll be likely out in January, I guess at this point. They've got their Shock Elite Kazakim with the Hotshot Las Guns, they've been out in that Kill Team box, and for Commanders, they've got Ursula Creed taking up her father's mantle, and the Cadian Castellan model, a new senior officer. They have a few retired characters as well, old Creed who got captured by Trazin, 
Kale, who was killed, and that Commander Pask, who's out of the Codex, they're a regiment with a lot of background to draw on. In-game, you can pick each of the doctrines for each regiment now, but perhaps their law-friendly doctrine that they had in the previous Codex was Born Soldiers. That one's now been reimagined as the same rule as Hammer of the Emperor. When you're shooting, sixes to hit the enemy will auto-wound them, and they count as a six to wound as well. It's quite a nice flat damage boost across the entire army. You're going to be around about gaining an extra 10% of firepower on most things, and against anything that you are wounding on a 5 plus or 6, it gets far, far better than that. Really nice for last guns and hotshot last guns in particular. This one gets on well with any sort of volume fire. On top of that, officers also give you a leadership aura, and there's a 1 CP stratagem to turn the Born Soldier's rule into working on a 5 plus rather than a 6, which is even more powerful. For the actual Cadian keyworded datasheets, things like the Shock Troops, Kazakin, or Castellan, there's a couple of Cadian Lock stratagems there as well. Vengeance of Acadia makes them extra angry at Chaos for blowing up their homeworld. You can use it on any Cadian keyworded unit or give it to another unit that's within 6 inches of a Cadian officer. It gives you plus 1 to wound when you're attacking a Chaos foe, so it's really quite a nice damage boost if you're playing against them. The other one's really strong as well, Cadia stands for 1 CP. This one makes wound rolls of 1 to 3 fail against Cadian infantry, and is really quite a big advantage for Cadian shock troops as your mainline battle troops. A lot of things will wound guard on a 2 plus, and turning that into a 4 plus is a big boost. Units wise, it is likewise very good news for the Cadians. The Kazakin are great, maybe one of the strongest units in the book. 100 points for some high AP las guns and a whole ton of special weapons plus they get a bonus Doctrine. If you want infantry to deal damage at close range, then these guys will do it great. They're one of the best choices for giving a lot of buffs to, and have some powerful unique stratagems of their own. Have them piling out of the Chimera, maybe picking up that extra Regimental Doctrine mechanised infantry, or teleport them across the board using that Barbican's Key Relic. Their standard Shock Troops are perhaps the best troops choice at the moment. They don't get a heavy weapon, but they do get a nice rule to make their last fire a little bit more dangerous, and combine that with a nice auto gun on the Sergeant, plus that stratagem, and you're in for a good time. Otherwise, Ursula Creed is really quite nice on the orders front. She gives out a plus one strength boost when she's ordering units, which is very nice. Strength four las guns are great. It's pretty nice on those bombast guns from the Field Ordnance Battery as well. Finally, Cadian Castellans or Command Squads can pick up a Relic of Lost Cadia. This one gives you a single turn of plus one to hit and plus one attack for Cadians. I'd say this one's okay, but it would bear in mind that you can usually get plus one to hit at range at least from take aim if you want it. I guess it could be okay to stack this with a different order, but just because you've got access to plus one to hit so readily already, I don't feel it's as interesting. Overall though, Cadians definitely get a lot of love. Some people say a bit too much from Games Workshop. They're a pretty easy regiment to use on all fronts at the moment, and every time one of them survives a last ditch breath on an objective, you can say Cadia stands. Moving on, if you like your guardsmen absolutely ripped, then you might like the Kaschan Jungle Fighters. Perhaps the other regiment that's had the most support historically, though it was a bit disappointing that they didn't get any kits revealed with this latest batch. The Kathachans are muscle-bound, hardened jungle warriors from the murderous death world of Kathachan, basically a planet where everything wants to eat or kill you, whether it's plant or animal. And if you can survive on that world, then you can basically survive the vast majority of the things that the galaxy has to throw at you. Most battles are a walk in the park, compared with surviving a single day on their homeworld. These guys are basically an entire army of Rambos, making practical and brutal warfare particularly handy with a knife up close, and they quite enjoy burning the enemy out of cover with flamethrowers. Miniatures-wise, now Cadians have had their range refresh. These guys are generally much older and worse quality overall, particularly the Kastjan jungle fighters and perhaps the heavy weapons are really showing their age quite a lot. Definitely kits that are deserving of a re-sculpt, and Games Workshop have shown that they can make some pretty awesome Kastjan sculpts over recent years, such as this one on the right, one of two past exclusive sculpts that was only on offer for a short time. Otherwise, they've got a Kastjan command squad, much nicer than the standard line infantry, and then a few special characters, Iron Hans Draken and Sergeant Harker, both slightly older resin miniatures, and Sly Marbo, who is a bit more of a recent one. In terms of gameplay, their law-friendly doctrine from the previous codex is Brutal Strength. This one gives you a plus one strength to infantry in the first round of melee, and also allows you to move and shoot with heavy weapons without penalty. I'd say both buffs are okay but not standout. The plus one strength will help out when your squads wind up in combat, but it's just so much less exciting than it was previously when you could get up to three attacks per guardsman. Most of the time you're only going to be getting one. I'd say the actual better bit of the two is now the heavy weapon boost. It's helpful for heavy weapon squads getting a bit of movement, or standard infantry squads lugging around things like las cannons. Perhaps the single best use of it might be getting a first rank fire, second rank fire going on things like Kazakhen. You could be chucking out quite a lot of hotshot fire if you did fancy converting up some Kastachan stormtroopers. They do have a stratagem that's kind of handy for them. 
but 1 CP Vicious Traps gives you some mortal wounds when the enemy charges you in cover. If you either have Cast Chan or have Sly Marbo on the battlefield, both of those make you a bit better. It gives you a decent chance of getting 2d3 mortal wounds on the opponent, which is pretty meaningful for 1 CP. Units wise, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Iron Hand Strachan in particular looks absolutely great at the moment. He gives out two orders like a Castellan does, but for just 25 points more than the Castellan, he's a lot harder to kill, and his close combat boost is absolutely monstrous, genuinely hitting very hard for the cost at 75 points. It's even better if you give him his Warlord traits. On the flip side though, the Jungle Fighter Troops datasheet is just absolutely awful compared with the other troops. It's easily the worst of the bunch, and I don't know why Games Workshop made it cost more. It's just got very limited options, the only real positives of it are a very weak melee buff, and getting two flamers, though you pass up the opportunity to take things like plasma and melter guns now, which is a bit sad. Otherwise, for the Elite's characters, Marbo and Harker both seem usable. Harker's okay for an order and a heavy bolter for 40 points, though you ideally need to take jungle fighters with him, which maybe takes the shine off a bit. Marbo looks really quite fun and pretty destructive for 50 points, hunting down enemy infantry or characters, and being a nuisance to deal with for the turns that when he's coming in. In any case, if you fancy an army of roided out mini Rambos, booby trapping the terrain and burning the enemy out with fire, then Catachans might be for you. Moving on, we've got everyone's favourite death obsessed gas mask people, the Death Corps of Krieg. These guys started life as a Forge World only regiment with all their kits in very expensive resin, but now Games Workshop have made their own plastic kit for them. The Death Corps hail from the shattered post nuclear apocalypse that is Krieg after fighting a long and brutal centuries-long civil war to try and keep their planet loyal to the Emperor and not turn against the Imperium. Now the years of strife have finally subsided, they have been sending regiments out into the galaxy at large again, operating as a siege regiment and winning a lot of fame at the Siege of Rax. The years of sacrifice appear to have been graying themselves in the Kriegsmen's psyches, they see it as the ultimate honour to be martyred for the Emperor, perhaps in single combat with a foul heretic trying to bash their brains out with an entrenching tool. Miniatures wise, Krieg are a regiment that Games Workshop actually realised in plastic really quite nicely now. They made a veteran guardsman kill team for them, a really cool and flexible kit that gives them a lot of options, and the one that I'd use to build the majority of the army around them. You could use the parts from that to customise a whole bunch of other units. It'd be really cool to see them make a similar kit like that for the other regiments, though they do seem to be taking their time about it. Otherwise though, as mentioned, they're largely a Forge World regiment. The vast majority of their miniatures are in rather expensive Forge World resin, at prices that are just spectacularly high, even by Games Workshop standards. In that range, they've got different sculpts for the infantry, their iconic Death Riders riding their clawed horses, their unique grenadiers with the shotguns, and also a couple of cavalry characters. The Forge World range is a bit diminished compared with what it was though, a bunch of the less popular kits went out of production, including things like their stormtroopers and one of their light vehicles, I believe. As with quite a lot of the guard regiments, there are third-party sellers that try and ape Games Workshop a bit and make either some generic gas mask infantry or just some head upgrades which you could swap out on Cadian kits if you wanted. Always a solid option for giving you more choices with guard sculpts, particularly for some of the other regiments that we'll get onto that don't have as good miniature support. In game, perhaps their famed doctrine is Cult of Sacrifice. This one's been reimagined in the new book to give you a plus one to hit if the squad has taken any casualties. This one's not terrible if you are using a whole bunch of infantry units and multi model squads. It won't be doing anything for your tanks or anything, and it is just a bit unreliable in it taking effect. Usually, it's dependent on your opponent injuring but not killing a unit. And in current 40k, there's a lot of times they're just going to be removing things outright. Will certainly be nice whenever you get a plus one to hit on your last couple of special weapons or something though. The other part of Cult of Sacrifice is that it gives you access to fire on my position for just one CP when a box caster dies in combat. Depending on what he's next to, that could be okay for a last flurry of mortal wounds. Maybe it's going to be more helpful if you can either target some very valuable infantry or have the chance of finishing off an injured character or something. That one is a good minor bonus. I feel like that stratagem is usually far too expensive at 2 CP. At 1 CP though, it's a lot more usable. As for their unique units, they get a Death Corps infantry squad in the troop section. These ones are significantly more expensive than the other ones, but also a bit tougher. They get a mini transhuman physiology type rule baked in. They get an extra special weapon that you can trade out for the Vox Caster if you'd like to, and they have a pretty usable medic upgrade that makes the first injured guardsman not die. Between that and the transhuman thing, you get quite a tanky infantry squad that you could put in a Chimera or something. Pretty usable, but a little bit of a trade-off seeing as they're more expensive in points. Otherwise, a bunch of their Forge World units have unique rules in the Imperial Armor Compendium, the Death Riders are unusually tanky cavalry. They get a 5 plus feel no pain, which makes them kind of hard to remove for the cost, but I must admit their melee damage is really underwhelming. 
a bit of a strange counterpoint to those new Attila and Ruff riders, which have pretty ridiculous damage, but a bit less durability. Otherwise, perhaps the other interesting data sheet are their Grenadiers. They just lost a lot of power, unfortunately, with the removal of the grenade throwing stratagem. The shotguns are okay, but really their best thing was throwing mass gas bombs at the enemy. Unfortunately, that's now no longer an option that you can do. Overall though, if you want a bunch of vaguely World War 1 themed infantry with gas masks and are willing to martyr themselves for the Emperor's cause, the Death Corps could be for you. I do think that their models look rather cool. Moving on, we've got the finely dressed Mordian Iron Guard. These guys are kind of highly drilled guardsmen parade infantry, hailing from the authoritarian and overcrowded night world of Mordian, a planet with a locked orbit, so life is only rarely possible on the narrow band between permanent day and permanent night. The planet was famed for a great heresy that was put down only with the uncompromising defensive fire patterns of the Iron Guard, and the regiment is famed for its fire patterns and fighting in uncompromising formations and defensive setups. Like a bunch of the following guard regiments, there aren't any official miniatures from Games Workshop currently. It had a previous metal infantry line that was never updated to resin, and then was phased out, I think it was in early 8th edition. In general, if you want Mordian style models, there are a few options. You could go to eBay to try and snag second-hand kits slightly at high prices, or go elsewhere for third-party lookalike miniatures, or 3D printed heads to maybe customise Cadians with. Perhaps out of anything for alternative to Games Workshop products, the guard infantry lines do have quite good representation. Gameplay-wise, the Mordians don't have a whole load. Their law-friendly doctrine from the previous codex is Parade Drill, and this one now makes lasguns become heavy too if they're stationary. Kind of like Bolter Discipline, but for lasguns. Unfortunately, while it doesn't sound too bad on paper, it just really doesn't stack up to being all that much. In general, you almost always want your infantry squads to be moving, getting in range or getting to objectives and things, and getting an extra smattering of extra last shots doesn't generally tend to be worth the positioning hit. On top of that, to maybe add insult to injury, any regiment can gain access to first rank fire, second rank fire, and make their last guns heavy three if they want to, meaning that the buff just isn't really all that unique. I think I'll probably go for other doctrines to represent them, to be honest, unless you just want to try and keep things super fluffy and try and make this work for law purposes. Overall though, if you like your guardsmen finely dressed, and with impeccable parade drill and firing patterns, the Mordian Iron Guard might be for you. Next up, we've got the Talon Desert Raiders, desert warfare specialists famed for mechanised warfare and lightning fast raids. The planet of Talon is a vast one, turned into a planet wide desert by ancient disasters, and it was the previous site of the biggest tank battle to ever happen in Warhammer 40k with vast formations of Talons fighting the enemies. They've definitely got a desert warfare vibe going on, and seem to like making war with turbans and curved sabres. Again, miniature-wise, these guys just aren't supported by Games Workshop currently. Again, a previous metal infantry line that was taken down, as well as a bunch of different infantry units. They also had their own unique character, Commander Alraham, a fun character that could allow you to do a flank march and have a whole bunch of your units turn up on the side of the enemy. Rules-wise, their updated doctrine from the previous book is Swift as the Wind. This gives them a plus one to move army-wide, or plus two inch to move instead for non-infantry, really nice for cavalry or vehicles. On top of that, the Rough Riders will particularly enjoy an extra plus one to the charge as well, so their threat range is going to be massively increased if you're playing this doctrine. Overall, I feel like this one is pretty usable. It's a small but solid movement boost, maybe particularly nice with vehicles that'll be zipping all over the place and getting the lines of sight that they need, and of course very good if you want to be doing some mass cavalry charges. Another one that might be kind of law appropriate for them could be Blitz Division. The strategic reserve thing could exemplify their flank march maybe. Otherwise, for a law appropriate relic, the Claw of the Desert Tigers, Al Rahem's Old Blade, is in the relic section. This one gives you a strength plus 2, AP minus 3, and damage 2 power sword with plus 2 attacks. It does genuinely transform something like a Castellan into a fairly punchy combatant. You'd be averaging a couple of Dead Space Marines a turn with this, and could be very nice with Frontline Fighter as well with a plus 1 to wound. In any case, if you'd like a fast moving Desert Warfare tank regiment, then the Talon would have you covered. Moving on to one of the galaxy's most embattled hive worlds, we have the Armageddon Steel Legion. Industrial mechanised infantry from the war-torn wastes of Armageddon, assailed on multiple occasions by demon primarch Angron and Gazgol Thraka. The Steel Legion are famed to fight from chimeras in armoured fist squads, unusually well supplied compared with other guardsmen, and following their long struggles against the orc hordes, they have become expert orc hunters, putting some of the savagery of the hive gangs from which they recruit onto the battlefield against the greenskins. Again, miniatures-wise, there's none from Games Workshop currently, unfortunately. They had a previous metal line that stuck around a little bit longer than some of the rest, being one of the most popular regiments, but now both they and their glorious hero, Commissar Yarrick, have been retired from Games Workshop's range. I have seen at least a few people painting up the Death Corps veteran miniatures in Steel Legion colours to work as a bit of a count as, 
They do have kind of similar aesthetics with trench coats and gas masks. Could perhaps do in a pinch if you do want Games Workshop's plastics. In game, their law friendly doctrine is industrial efficiency. This one's fairly unchanged from the previous one, but now affects infantry as well. It makes the army basically ignore AP-1, treating it as AP-0, so very good if your opponent's using loads of AP-1 weapons, entirely useless if they're not. As defensive buffs go, if it's triggering, it's really decent. It just depends on how much you're likely to face that damage profile in the meta, but being extra good against some armies and extra bad against others isn't usually the best place for a regiment trait. I do think as well if you wanted to represent Armoured Fist squads, then the Mechanised Regimental Doctrine will be a pretty decent pick. That allows you to get out of your Chimeras after moving, and has a stratagem to mount up again. That would quite represent their fluffy Mechanised nature. Overall, if you want a hardy force of Hive World troops fighting with the well-supplied Armourers of Armageddon, then the Steel Legion might be for you. Next up, we get to the Valhalla Ice Warriors, their home planet a desolate frozen wasteland, Famed for uncompromising infantry assaults and unwavering defences, typically hordes of conscripts driven ever onwards by their feared commissars. Perhaps more than most amongst the regiments, they do tend to take the doctrine to heart, and if a problem doesn't have an easy solution, then simply throw more men at it. They definitely feel like they have a bit of a Soviet infantry sort of theme going on, snowbound infantry with a heavy presence of commissars. Again, no real miniature support from Games Workshop, so likely go elsewhere. Their metal lines retired, as is their previous character, Commander Chenkov. Again, if you want a bit of a stand-in, you could maybe go for something like the Death Corps of Krieg miniatures, perhaps with a head swap, or just maybe go entire third-party models. From the previous codex, their unique doctrine was Grim Demeanor, which has now been reimagined to just ignoring combat attrition modifiers. Pretty good to keep at least a few more guardsmen on the line, though probably not the strongest regimental trait overall. Perhaps the most interesting use of this one, though, is that it allows you to use the acceptable losses stratagem on any unit that has it, rather than just platoon units. It means that you could potentially have, say, armoured units in combat with enemy forces, and then just order your own men to shoot down those enemy forces, even if some shots hit your own tanks. That does seem pretty handy for helping out embattled units, even if you do cause them a bit of small damage. It might not be a terrible trait for a very tank-heavy regiment as a result. That stratagem will be pretty handy for dealing with enemy combat. Overall, if you want a regiment of grim, determined, great-coated winter warfare experts, then the Valhalla and Ice Warriors might be for you. Moving on to some of the fanciest hats in the Astra Militarum, we have the Vostroen Firstborn. The Vostroen regiments are unusual throughout the Guard, as they're recruited out of the Firstborn Sons of every family on their homeworld, a planet paying an eternal penance for a long past rebellion, and forever condemned to turn over a large chunk of their population to fight in humanity's ceaseless wars. The Vostroen regiments are famed for fighting with heirloom weaponry, powerful relic las guns that have been passed down throughout generations, and each one is said to be far, far more valuable than the life of the actual soldier fighting with it, who will no doubt fall in turn and pass it on to one of his comrades. Again, no miniatures from Games Workshop currently. They did have a previous metal line that was never updated to resin. It was kind of interesting that they came back as a made-to-order a few years back, where they made a whole bunch of them to satisfy anyone who wanted them at that point. Might mean that there might just be a few more on the secondary market than some of the other regiments. For their stylistic regimental doctrine, they get heirloom weapons, a plus 4 inch range to all guns. Overall, it's genuinely really quite a strong buff to a primarily shooting army, particularly nice for short ranged guns such as melter guns, multi melters, and 24 inch tank weapons like demolisher cannons or punisher cannons. A bit of extra range can just mean that you've got better choice of targets, or you've got options to get things in range that otherwise wouldn't have been. Overall, I feel that like this one's quite solid and quite an easy one to take if you're unsure. They do have a unique relic as well, the armour of Graf Tuchenko. This one's a fancy suit of armour for a company commander or something. It grants you a mighty 2 plus armour save and plus 1 wound, so it makes them massively harder to kill than they were before. So I guess if you just want one commander to be extra hard to take down because it's carrying some absolutely vital stuff, then I guess that could be okay. Still maybe not super standout though, you probably just want to try and shield your characters with Lookout Sir. If you want to have a very finely adorned army with big hats and fancy guns though, then the Vostroyans might be your regiment. Lastly, for perhaps the primary regiment in the Astra Militarum Codex, we have the Militarum Tempestus Scions, which kind of function as their own regiments with their own different organisation. Unlike recruited guard soldiers, their elite troops train for from birth at the Scholar Progenium, an elite school essentially for Imperial Special Forces, and while they enjoy fancier armour and better spec war gear than a lot of the rest of the guard, 
It does also mean that they're dropped into the most dangerous and hostile situations. They're well renowned for their drop tactics, using grav shoots to insert from the backs of Valkyries, and blasting apart heavily armoured foes with their devastating hotshot las guns. They're essentially the guard special forces. Miniatures wise, these guys are largely just supported by the one fairly fancy plastic kit. This one builds five models, either the standard Tempesta Scion units, or the Scion Command Squad, and their Tempesta Prime, and they can take some special weapons like the hotshot volley gun. Besides that, they've got their own unique version of the Torox Transport, the Torox Prime with some bigger guns on top, plus the Valkyrie as well, which seems to have gained the Militarum Tempestus keywords in the new codex, all the better for close-range aerial drops. As for gameplay, the Scions are almost their little mini-army within the codex, a fair bit of support, though arguably a little bit less than they had prior to the codex. They now don't get regimental doctrines or anything, what they have instead is their infantry getting built in exploding sixes to hit, quite a nice general purpose damage boost, they get ballistic skill 3+, plus, deep strike, and better armour with a 4+, plus save. The loss of flexibility is a bit unfortunate, but flat increases in damage certainly aren't bad. Units wise, the Scion squads are pretty decent deep strike damage dealers, and can potentially be troops and objective secured if they take their own detachment. It does mean that you can still run entire Scion armies if you really want to. The command squad is locked to ordering scions about, but does get slightly better damage and defence, with better ballistic skill and armour. They can't take the regimental advisors though. And the Torox Primes and the Valkyries both look like they're fairly premium transports in the new codex. They do have a bit of accurate firepower, but to me it does seem like they pay a bit of a premium for it. Relics wise they can take a Null coat, which is a bit rubbish in my opinion to deny the witch, and have a refractor field generator. The second one's a bit better as it gives your scions a 5 plus inball save. Quite a solid durability boost. And they've got three different flavours of unique warlord traits to amp up your shooting, giving you some very helpful things like ignore cover or amping up your rapid fire range. Finally, they've got a few stratagems of their own, though admittedly far less than when they had their supplement book. There's a 2 CP to mount up after they've fired, kind of handy to escape into transports. A 1 CP for making them a bit tougher on objectives, though they're still not particularly tough for the cost even with this, and quite a fun one called Overcharged Lad Cells to do mortal wounds on sixes to wound, that can certainly give their hotshot weapons a lot more bite. Overall they can generally hit decently hard, but maybe a bit more better suited to being a chunk of your army rather than the whole of it, I feel like if you're just limiting yourself to Scions you probably are playing guard on hard mode. If you want to run the Astra Militarum Special Forces though, then the Militarum Tempesta Scions might be ones that you want to run in a big way. Finally, before we take a look through the regimental traits, I thought I'd just mention a few other notable regiments, maybe with a little bit less support, but some interesting stuff. First up, we've got the Tanith First and Only, the Stealth and Covert Operations Infantry Regiment from the Gaunt's Ghost novels. The regiment doesn't have its own model line, but it did get this really cool unit to represent Gaunt as some of the major characters from the books. Very nicely executed miniatures in my mind, resplendent in their Tanith camo cloaks. If you wanted to represent them as a regiment, maybe something like the Veteran Guerrillas Doctrine might be okay, ignoring light cover at 18 inches. Gaunt's Ghosts themselves are kind of interesting, but fairly pricey HQ choice at 120 points. They do a little bit of everything, shooting and melee, though I do feel for a unit of that kind of cost, they do pay a bit of a premium for how much damage they do, particularly as they're sort of mixed role, sort of equally happy at shooting and in combat, and don't do any one thing super well. Can be fun though that they can't be shot from greater than 18 inches away, it means that they can survive on objectives and things. Another regiment that's got a bit more prominence in the new codex are the Attilan Rough Riders. These guys are a fully mounted regiment from the feudal world of Attila, where they're still ruled over by the Imperium, though it's very much Imperium in medieval times for them. They basically fight as they would like heavy cavalry with lances, and with their shiny new models their hunting lances can pack either melter or frag explosive tips with devastating effects on infantry or vehicles alike. Currently in the guard book you can't really field them as an 100% cavalry regiment if you don't want to, 3 units of 10 rough riders would be the max, I guess you could put in some death riders as well if you wanted to mix in some Krieg forces, I suppose nothing to stop you from converting a whole load of feudal men at arms on foot though, could be really quite cool. The actual Rough Riders unit that they get though really does seem pretty great at the moment. Enormous melee damage into just about any target that they happen to try and charge, more so if you get fixed bayonets. Maybe not super super durable for their points cost, but they do seem very usable and pretty scary. Lastly, before looking at the list of regimental traits, we have the Elysian Drop Troops as well. These guys were a regiment made by Forge World, but then stopped producing them, so they don't have any models from the Games Workshop once more. The Elysians are an airborne regiment that fight from Valkyries, and they hail from a civilised world, beset by constant attacks from pirates and raiders, which they seem to deal with in a bit of a special forces type manner, 
maybe in a similar sort of style to the Tempestus Scions perhaps. Previously they had a moderately sized range from Forge World, now entirely gone, so I guess it's second hand models or convert your own. If I were to run them in game though, I feel like just using them as Tempestus Scions would make most sense. They do use a lot of the same tactics, even if it's slightly different war gear. So now we've talked through each one of the regiments, I thought it might be fun just to take a quick look over the full list of regimental traits, a fair few of which aren't really directly associated with any one regiment in the lore, and there can be some really quite fun combos. Going through them, we've got Born Soldiers, the Cadian style one, counts as two picks and sixes to hit auto wounds, there's Expert Bombardiers, they gain the keyword and artillery gets plus one to hit against targets within 12 inches of a Vox caster, that one really is quite nice, a big boost to the damage of artillery if you're running them, certainly seems like a stronger one. Veteran Guerrillas can gain you the keyword, plus infantry and sentinels ignore cover within 18 inches. If you're looking to have close range damage dealers with infantry, it makes a lot of sense. I feel like this is quite a nice one with things like Kazakin. Industrial Efficiency is the Armageddon one, that one's AP1 counts as AP0, kind of situational as mentioned. Grim Demeanor is the Valhalla one, ignoring combat attrition, and the keyword for that fires into melee stratagem. Play Drill is the Mordian one, stay still for double shot last guns, not that exciting really. Cult of Sacrifice is the Krieg one, take casualties for a plus one to hit, plus you can use that fire on my position stratagem a bit cheaper. Not terrible, but does kind of rely on your opponent to trigger it, and also for your squad to be injured but not killed. Mechanized Infantry is one that we didn't really touch on too much. That one allows them to gain a keyword to use a re-embark after your shooting stratagem, quite nice to escape from reprisals, but perhaps more importantly it gives you the ability for transports to move and then the infantry units to get out after. Really quite a nice way to slingshot objective secured troops onto objectives, or to have things like Kazakin turn up and light up the foe. Really quite a strong one I think. Armoured superiority makes your vehicles count as more models on objectives, the bigger the vehicle, the more models. If you want to field something like a tank company, this seems like a good way of making it work. You're going to need to have some power on objectives, and this in combination with that objective secured order could give you it. It also gives you the keywords to allow other units besides battle tanks to fire on death for one CP. Blitz Division is kind of an interesting flank march type one. You have the power level for putting things in strategic reserve, making it a lot more viable, and you can arrive at any point on the board as if it were battle round three, if it were battle round two. Not awful, and I guess if you do want to use strategic reserves in a big way, this could save you a command point or two. I'm not super convinced it's massively worth it though, compared with just paying the CP costs anyway. Not when you're passing up an army-wide buff. Heirloom weapons is the Vostroen one, a plus four inch range to all guns besides relics. Really quite nice army-wide and helps out your shooting. Trophy Hunters is one that counts as two selections for some reason. It gives you plus one strength to any attacks versus monsters and vehicles which is really quite a nice buff, but I'm not sure it's quite nice enough to pass up two different traits for, particularly as against some armies it's going to be utterly worthless. I guess if you're playing against Imperial Knights or Monster Heavy Tyranids or something, it could be okay, though it does feel like a bit of a choice that will be list tailoring maybe. Brutal Strength is the Catacham one, plus one strength to infantry in the first round of combat, plus moving and shooting heavy weapons for no penalty. In general, both bits are okay for infantry units, though not super standout. I'd say it's actually probably best on things like Kazakin using first rank fire, second rank fire. It does seem a bit of a strange use of it though. Elite Sharpshooters is a nice simple one. You gain the keyword and you get to re-roll one hit roll each time you shoot. A pretty effective little damage boost for a shooting regiment like the Guard. Really nice if you've got some big hard hitting units like Vanquisher tanks in the ranks, and very handy for scattered special weapons as well. Again, really not a bad one if you're unsure. Swift of the Wind gives you an extra 2 inch move to most units, but just plus 1 to infantry and artillery. You also get a plus 2 to charge, that will add up over the course of the game to being in range or line of sight of things, or maybe just getting those couple of inches that you needed to get onto an objective, when otherwise you might have fallen short. Rough Riders in particular look like they could really quite use that. Finally, Recon Operators gives Infantry, Cavalry and Sentinels a 6 inch movement pre-game, could allow you to get a bunch of infantry towards the centre of the board to take those points early, not going to be quite as much use though if you're very vehicle heavy. Overall I think there's a fair amount of selections, and I think that they're at least somewhat balanced to the extent where there isn't just one or two really obvious choices that are always going to get played. Direct shooting buffs like Born Soldiers, or the combo of Elite Sharpshooters and Heirloom Weapons both seem fine, but there seems like there's some really nice combos for things like delivering mechanised infantry punches, going artillery heavy, and going tank heavy if you wanted to count more units on objectives. Swift of the Wind also seems really nice as a good movement boost. I'm not going to go through literally all of them again in the way that I'd rank them, but in general I'd rank these ones at the top as perhaps the stronger picks, 
Broadly speaking, if you happen to be taking a bunch of the units that the regimental trait favours, then it's going to be a much more viable pick, and I feel like you can certainly build around some of them, say taking multiple units of Chimera-mounted Katakin for mechanised infantry, or taking a whole stack of artillery and a bunch of adventurous sentinels and boxcaster units if you're going for expert bombardiers. A lot of them do just feel a little bit on the mediocre side though, maybe in general giving buffs to a few units out of the army but not very many, and I feel like they maybe don't quite stack up unless you're going for a bit more fun and floppy maybe. Let me know your thoughts though, I'll be interested to hear what you're thinking about playing with the guard, either for law appropriate choices or crunchy combos to deliver the maximum amount of dead xenos or heretics. So anyway, I think we'll leave that there. Hope you've enjoyed a general overview of Imperial Guard regiments in the 9th edition Astra Militarum Codex, and a bit of lore of the guard armies spread across the stars. As always, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, which regiment is the best and why. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, where I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming, I'll hopefully be doing plenty more for the Astra Militarum. If you'd like to watch another comparison video, I'll leave a link to a video comparing the various Lehman Ross turrets down in the video description. Feel free to check that one out if you'd like to know which turrets deal the most efficient dead heretics or aliens. Finally, if you got good value out of the video, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and that's how I can afford to keep on making so many videos like this, and have new 40k content coming out just about every day. That's also links down in the video description if you'd like to help support. Channel patrons do get a few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.